Hello my darlings and welcome to a brand new vlog. I just suddenly got in the mode to do a wardrobe clear out and as you may know I don't do like major wardrobe clear outs, I do little and often, I say little and often, medium size and fairly often clear outs and I love watching other people do these so I thought I would pick up the vlogging camera, start vlogging for today as I embark on my first wardrobe clear out of 2022. I always find the January clear out a really, really therapeutic one because throughout Q4, so September, September in Q4? October, November, December, my wardrobe, <laughs> because of my job, just becomes monst monstrously overflowing. Um, so it's always really, really therapeutic to have the cleanse at the beginning of the year. And I think there's something about like taking down the Christmas decorations and just getting the house back to normal that makes me crave a little bit of a little bit of a clear out. So that is what we are going to do today. I'm going to just zip around as I usually do all the different cupboards in my wardrobe. I'm also going to be looking at shoes, accessories, and seeing what I can part ways with and as always I'm going to leave a little kind of email sign up down below so obviously a lot of this stuff will go to charity some things might go to friends and family um, but some some things will even go to rental websites I'm going to be listing a few of my dresses on by rotation so you guys can rent them if you've got any special events coming up um, but some of the bits which I spent a little bit more money on, I will be selling on, so you can purchase some, I'll leave a little sign up. Information about all of that in the description box down below. Please excuse the somewhat scary lighting down this end of the room. I've got spotlights up here in my dressing room and I always think that spotlights are the least flattering lighting, like how much better if the light comes from around you as opposed to from above you. So we're just gonna ignore the horrible lighting. I'm gonna start in my knitwear cupboard. Um, yes, I'm wearing a full cozy outfit for today because I'm gonna start with my knitwear because I do often find that I make the most progress when it comes to clearing out knitwear. It looks quite substantial when it's all kind of piled up on the island here um, and it gives me that little buzz to keep going. So yeah, I'm gonna start off with knitwear. There's some things here which I've been holding on to for many years and I look at them every year and I think, should I get rid of them? This is gonna be the year that I do actually get rid of them. So just have a look inside my knitwear cupboard. Everything is cream, white, and pink. There's a lot of repetition that's going on here. A lot of pieces that I absolutely love, which makes it very, very challenging. But let's start by taking out empty hangers because, oh, just the one. That's not very useful. Right, three, two, one, let's do this. safely say it has been a very long time since I've actually been able to shuffle through the rails in this way in my knitwear cupboard. Normally everything is so tightly jam-packed that I can't even see what's in here. So that is definitely humongous progress that has been made. We have got a ginormous pile here of knitwear, which I am clearing out. We have got, for example, this And Other Stories cardigan, absolutely beautiful, but I've had it I remember seeing it in my last clear out and it still has the label on, so I've clearly not worn this. Annoyingly, this is an absolutely gorgeous Reese jumper, but I actually shrunk it a tiny bit in the wash, so it still fits me, but it's just a little bit tight and I feel like it's not the kind of jumper that necessarily wants to be tight, but I know someone that's like a size four, it'll fit absolutely perfectly. Other jumpers, which are quite old from the likes of Reese and Club Monaco, beautiful cashmere jumpers, but again, I've just had them and I know that I've not touched them since my last clear out, so I think that is absolutely amazing progress to get started. And now, while I'm on this high, I'm going to tackle my coat collection next because I always find it so hard to part ways with coats.
have got rid of quite as many coats as I have knitwear, but I feel like, again, I've made really good progress. My top tip for doing a clear out is you just have to be in the right mind frame. Like right now, I think I'm on a bit of a high from clearing away Christmas decorations and living off that thrill of getting space back in the house. Like it's amazing how much bigger your rooms feel when you take down the Christmas decorations. So I'm capitalizing on that feeling and I'm being quite thorough right now, which is a really good mood to be in. Obviously don't get rid of stuff that you're gonna regret, take time, don't maybe get rid of it for a little while. If you're in this mood, pop it away, pop it aside, um, think about it a bit, but I feel like I'm doing a really good job. Coat-wise, so far I've pulled out there are only so many Borg coats that a girl needs, so I've just kept my favourite and I've got a couple that I will probably sell. A few faux fur coats that I have worn maybe once or twice over the last couple of years. Um, oh, my knitwear just fell over. <laughs> um, and then we've got a few things here, again, that have still got the tags on, which is crazy. Something that I love about doing wardrobe clearouts is that you remind yourself about stuff that you've got that you might have forgotten about. Like, this is just... Some people are gonna find this so boring, but like this cardigan from Jules, which is like Sherpa, perfect for dog walks and gardening and things like that. And I'd completely forgotten about it. So that's another great reason to do clear outs. You really remind yourself and can actually see and have access to the stuff that you genuinely love and that work really well for your wardrobe. I also love this uh, like wool cardigan. I think this is from Reese. It doesn't seem to have a label in it because I have a feeling it's reversible. Um, but yeah, it's just like a big oversized wool cardigan and I think that's just so nice, like so perfect for my lifestyle, the kind of things that I do, this is just perfect for. It's probably a bit chilly for this at the moment, it's going to be really cold the next couple of nights, according to my gardener who just texts me to let us know. Um, but yeah, when it starts to warm up a little bit for spring, absolutely perfect. Now before this room becomes an absolute tip. I'm gonna bag up um, the bits that I have cleared out so far. There's already loads and I've only done two product categories. And I'm just looking outside. It's currently blue skies, um, but it's probably gonna get dark in about an hour. So I think I'm actually gonna take the dogs for a quick walk, which will invigorate me once again. Um, and I'll continue this after the dog walk. <laughs> And the dogs are now bathed. <laughs> they get so muddy when we take them for a walk at this time of year, especially when it's been raining. But I feel invigorated. I might go and get some snacks. Snacks always help when you're doing a clear out because I think what I'm gonna tackle next is workout clothing and bottoms. I've not cleared out like skirts and bottoms in a long time. So I think this could be a good section. But first, I need snacks. So my snack of choice is cheese and crackers. I just love a savory snack and this I find really hearty and filling. Um, and then that little splodge on the side is the Dalesford Fig and Balsamic Chutney. It's just so delicious. Yes, I've been eating so much of this over the Christmas period, but oh, I just love it. So the perfect snack while I attack, oh, that rhymed, <laughs> my fitness clothing and my bottoms.
messy down here, um, but this is organized mess in my wardrobe. As you can see, I have cleared a bit of a space in my bottoms cupboard, but not a huge amount really, but I think that's probably because I don't bring that many new bottoms into my wardrobe. We've got skirts, we've got Zimmerman shorts, we've got these kind of boucle skirts, and then we've even got some of my old suede skirts and some trousers down here, but I think I get new tops far more often than I get new bottoms, so yeah, I just don't really seem to have too many. I've only pulled out a very small selection, a couple of Club Monaco skirts that I haven't worn in years, a pair of Reese shorts that I've not worn in years, um, my Reese pink suede skirt, I just don't really know if I'll wear that again, and then a midi skirt that, I don't know, I just always felt like I looked a little bit old fashioned um, when I wore that, so just a few skirts. You may have seen at the start of that hyperlapse though, I did have a little bit more success with my blouses and my tops. Once again, there's so many bits in here that I have forgotten about and that I need to wear more of. I really do have some absolutely gorgeous pieces. I'm gonna move some of this over to the knitwear cupboard actually now that there's some room in there. So yeah, I've got lots of lovely silk tops. I've got lots of lovely t-shirts, blouses. Um, I did manage to pull out maybe eight or 12 items, lots of broderie anglais, but I'm not going to force myself to get ready, rid of too many of these because, as you can see at the back section there, I have got plenty of room in this area. I did get rid of a few hats, um, but then I do love to wear caps and visors when I'm gardening, so these are definitely staying. I did fairly well in my cupboard that houses my jumper dresses and my midi skirts. I know, quite a strange combination. Um, but I have decided to part way with a few things, including a few metallic midi skirts. If I didn't wear them this last party season, am I going to wear them again? That is the question. I've got a few jumper dresses where I have similar, really similar styles. Um, sometimes I've got like a River Island version and a Reese version and a Club Monaco version. I've tried to find the version that I like the least um, and just keep one of each kind of jumper dress style and then some more plain ones that I just feel that I have more exciting options now. So where I have got so many jumper dresses, I've tried to be quite thorough in this area. Gosh, this is a messy area, so it's gonna be nice to go through here. I have got a lot of bobble hats, a lot of scarves, a lot of gloves, um, so I think I'm gonna try and go through that area. And then, I don't think I've ever really cleared out, oop, cleared out my scarves. There's probably some in here that I don't wear anymore. I just, I'm not sure if I'm gonna wear this Gucci one again. Oh, but it's so lovely, no, I might as well keep that. And they all fit so nicely in here, so maybe I won't touch my scarves. Um, I've got quite a lot of, like leggings and thermals, a little bit of workout clothing in here. So yeah, this is basically my like winter section. And then the next set of double doors down here is the equivalent summer section. So we've got summery things like beach towels, beach bags. Oh my gosh, get me in the sunshine. Bikinis, now's probably not the time of year to clear out bikinis, but I could probably do with tidying this drawer at least. So let's start with deep winter and then we'll move on to deep summer. doing this and I'm listening to a podcast from the business of fashion about secondhand fashion and it's actually such an interesting video. I will leave this linked down below. It's just very, it's really interesting listening to it and the psychology of secondhand fashion and whether it is actually sustainable or not. There's some really good arguments for and against. Um, so yeah, have a little listen to this if you're doing your own clear out. I always think it's nice to have something interesting playing in the background. That is the founder of Depop and then the founder of um, Business of Fashion interviewing her. So, my own journey, this little section, as you can see, is now so much tidier. 
they should not be there. Oh, compare this to how this looked a second ago. So I have cleared out my hats, my um, ear warmer type things, my scarves. I've cleared out that whole section and it now looks so much better. I actually know what I've got here now. So we've got some nice thick scarves like from Knitwear Queen, Katie Loxton. I've got some lovely gloves over there. My gorgeous Kate Spade pearly earmuffs, some hats over here. Um, and other bits and bobs. I haven't actually touched this scarf section, but they all look so neat and cozy there. I think they're fine. And then this section, I've now got my thermals, my kind of workout jumpers um, slash gardening jumpers, and then my serious thermals slash ski base layers. And then these, I could not recommend these any more highly, especially if maybe you think you're going to be out all day and you're not sure if you're going to get chilly later on. It's so useful to have in your bag or in the car because they just keep you so warm. They're these like down puffer coats and um, you can wear them underneath your other coats. Like I'll often wear them underneath my barbers. I got mine, I think one of these is from Uniqlo and one is from M&S. They're both just as good. I'll leave the down puffers down below because they are just so amazing. Now, the last time I opened this drawer, there was a giant spider in here. Um, so, Look away now if you're arachnophobic. Not today, it was like a month ago, but... Mm -mm -mm. Okay, it seems like the coast is clear, but he might be nestled in amongst all of this stuff. I'm going to have a rummage through here. This is one of the down jackets that I think I've lost the um, bag for. But yeah, they are just super, super useful. Also great if you're traveling because they don't take up any weight at all. Great if you get a bit chilly on airplanes and things like that. But yeah, I'm going to have a rummage through this section and carry on listening to my podcast. Not so successful in my summer wardrobe section. I've actually not got rid of anything. I'm just not in the mindset for looking through bikinis at the moment. Um, so I'm just gonna leave that. And then, to be honest, this stuff is all stuff that I just kind of grab and get mucky in when I'm gardening in the summer. It's all high street stuff, so I'd only end up sending it to charity shop and recycling potentially. Um, there's obviously not much resale value at all. <laughs> I'm saying this because I've just been listening to a Depop podcast um, in really high street stuff, like a lot of H&M. But yeah, these are just the kind of things that I wear when I'm gardening. So while they may not be glamorous, they do get very used. And then I seem to have started putting some more summery pajamas down here. Um, some of them are quite old. So again, I'll probably just get rid of a few of those when it gets a bit warmer. But I think charity shops would not be happy with me right now if I started taking a load of summer stuff in. So the next section is handbags. I need to clean my wardrobe doors. They've got a bit of foundation marks on them. To be honest, um, do you know what? The only bag, let's see if you and I are both on the same wavelength. The only bag here that I could possibly think about getting rid of is this Tory Burch one up here. I'm just not sure that that is my vibe. Still love Tory Burch, but I'm not sure how I feel about this bag at the moment. Ooh. Some Monica Venator boxes. What on earth? This is like a treasure hunt. Surely they're empty. Yeah, unfortunately they're empty. How funny. I think actually I used to have this bag up on the top of my display area up there, didn't I? So maybe I used the Monica Venator boxes to flatten it out. But I mean, I've got so many gorgeous bags that I haven't used in a little while, but I'm going to blame lockdown for that. My Prada backpack, my Prada tote, Chloe basket bag, I'll get a lot of use out of that in the summer. My Mulberry Bays water, maybe there's some things down in the bottom section here that I could get rid of. Is that my giant Loewe tote bag? You can just see the bright pink of my Mulberry hold all down there. I might give this area a little bit of a sort out because it looks very messy right now.
apologies that these dresses look very unceremonious on the floor at the moment, but at least they're on the rug. I've surprised myself, yes, I'm a bit out of breath. I've surprised myself with how much I've managed to clear from my dress cupboard. These are going to be sold on or given to friends or whatever I decide to do with them. And then this pile over here is going to go on by rotation. So these dresses you'll be able to rent, whether it is some of these beautiful needle and thread gowns, including my iconic red Christmas needle and thread gown, the Karen Millen sequin dress that I wore at New Year's, such a good party dress. Um, and even this beautiful Zimmerman number, I think these will all be perfect to go on the rental website. And my goodness, I am glowing. I love how I said at the beginning, this is just gonna be like a mini, a mini clear out and it has ended up being absolutely ginormous. I think I've just been in the complete right mindset to do this today. I've been very, very thorough and decisive, but I feel like I have naturally come to an end because I've made my way all around the room ending up in my dress section, but I have to stop now anyway because Charlie and I are going to get our booster jabs. Yay, can't wait. I will probably catch up with you guys in the morning. Good morning, my darlings. It is a blooming <laughs> freezing January morning this morning. I am gonna instantly put on my heated seat, level three, heated steering wheel, and warm up a little bit. Um, I'm all boosted, had my booster jab last night with Charlie and Chipping Norton. Um, we both feel absolutely fine, just a tiny bit bruised on the arm, but otherwise absolutely fine. And I am heading out this morning to get a pedicure, which I'm very much looking forward to. It is very much overdue. Um, I'm gonna be nice and early by the looks of it. That's what I love in January because my diary is not like super, super busy with work stuff. I feel so much more on top of things, like I'm actually on time for my appointments. That's something that I need to work on this year, is just managing my time a little bit better. Oh my gosh, the steering wheel is still so cold. Um, if you're wondering, I feel like I always just have so much crap in the back of this car. Um, this is our Christmas tree, Balsam Hill Bags. By the way, they've got an epic sale on right now if you really want to get um, your Christmas tree for next year, if you've got somewhere to store it, I'd highly recommend checking out their sale because their trees are the best. I'll leave a link down below. Um, but the reason why I've got a tree in bags in the back of the car is because... <laughs> Sorry, I can't talk and maneuver out of our driveway at the same time. Why is this not getting hot yet? Um, yeah, basically, because we now have the world's most ginormous Christmas tree and the nine-footer, we just feel like because we're not gonna be touching them until at least October, which is 10 months away, there's no point in filling up our garage. So we're gonna leave them in the garage at Strawtop Cottage because it's mostly empty in there aside from a few bits and bobs for like changeovers, like washing up detergent and things like that. So, oh, Bumblebee, I hate when I meet someone on the lane here. Okay. Oh, he's letting me go. Okay, I'm coming, mate. Thank you very much, kind sir. Guys, I cannot even begin to tell you how enjoyable it was getting my outfit together today. I'm not wearing anything exciting at all. I'm just wearing leggings, kind of leggings. Um, newsflash, Marks and Spencer make a version of the Reese Tyne trousers, which you may know are my favorite trousers of all time. Basically a smarter kind of legging. Um, yeah, they, they fit like leggings and they're as comfortable as leggings, but they're a slightly smarter material. I will show you a little bit later on. Yeah, M&S do a version of those trousers, which my mum got me for Christmas and they're so comfortable so i'm wearing those in this beautiful dark green color and then this really lovely cozy um jumper i think at the end of last year i just got into the habit of wearing only my newer stuff and i forgot about so many core favorites in my wardrobe so yesterday and the clear out really invigorated that in me and i'm so happy that i did it <gasps> four sausage dogs four sausage dogs <laughs> I love how many sausage dogs live in this village. Oh my gosh, it's just amazing. Um, but yeah, I feel great having done that clear out yesterday. My wardrobe feels so much more manageable. I feel like I've refreshed 
knowing what I've got in my wardrobe. Um, felt great. Ooh. Yikes. It is such a glorious day today. Ooh, it is such a glorious day today. This is like the perfect winter day. It is, according to my car, it's three degrees, but I think it's actually colder than that because there is still so much frost on the ground. Um, but it's beautifully sunny, as you can see. Ah, oh, there is literally not a cloud in the sky. It is so beautiful. Um, but yeah, I'm just rambling now for the sake of rambling. <laughs> so darlings, I will um, catch up with you a little bit later. later whoopsie daisy it seems that i have lost my vlogging mojo but great pedicure really really speedy actually which was wonderful i now have coffee colored <laughs> toenails in case you wanted to know um but we've actually had a very very good day today we have had a potential new team member for Fashion Mumbler um, over at the house today and we've been kind of brainstorming some ideas, some strategy and some ideas for 2022 and beyond. Just kind of thinking like where where can we take this business? That was a it was a really interesting day and I feel very very inspired after lots of brainstorming. Um, but yeah, it means that I've got a lot of emails and things I need to catch up on now after spending the whole day away from my laptop. So I'm going to take the laptop downstairs and sit with the boys on the sofa. I'm going to put Selling Sunsets on in the background and get on with a lot of work. Naturally, the second my bottom hits the sofa to start doing some work, I'm joined by my two best assistants. We snuggle up to each other <laughs> when it gets to this time of day where I just need to like crack on. Normally I sit up in the office to do my work, but I feel like this boy, these boys need a little bit of attention this evening. It is now dinner time and Charlie and I are very hungry, but also feeling a little bit lazy. So we have put in some all plants dinners and these ones all sound absolutely delicious. I've had this one before and um, all plants is basically chef perfect, chef prepared meals, um, which you can choose on their website. I am working with all plants on my Instagram, by the way, but this is not sponsored. But we are absolutely obsessed, and we were probably customers for a good like six to eight months before we started working with them, weren't we? Yeah, exactly. The best way. I yeah. Think, I don't know if they noticed that or, or or whatever, but we just love the convenience. <laughs> You've got something dangling from your chin. It looks oh, like a spider. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, we, we love, love the convenience it. of it because obviously out here we don't have delivery or anything like that. No. We try not to eat meat in the week. These are obviously all meat free. These are the kind of nights that maybe when we lived in Clapham we might have delivered a sushi or something. Yeah, so I mean it's not unhealthy. No. It's quite creative recipes as well, which I like. The recipes are amazing. Like we, we had an onion bhaji dal the other night. Um, but we think that Charlie might have, you might have a bit of an intolerance to, what do you think it is, lentils or something? I think I've got an intolerance to lentils and, and chickpeas or one or the other. Nightmare. Which is really annoying because to me that's like healthy food. Mm. But I need to try and work it out this year. Yeah. But some, ironically, when I actually eat really what I believe to be healthily. I'm I okay often, for the peri-peri, I'll just have a tiny bit. Um, have a bit more of the rice. Charlie might have an intolerance, is the moral of that story. Um, but all plants... They're basically delicious. So this is the chicken, obviously not real chicken, katsu curry. And they're like these little chicken breaded items. And then you've got the katsu sauce. The we've chicken's from Meatless Farm, isn't it? Meatless Farm, yeah. It's a collaboration with Meatless Farm. And then we've got peri-peri soy chicken style strips with a fiery peri-peri rub of orange zest, chili and oregano served with spicy rice and smashed peas. And then we've also got in the aga the aromatic spiced grain. So it's perfect for those evenings when we're absolutely ravenous. Um, but we can't be able to cook. <laughs> You. No, no, my dinner. 